good morning everyone so how are we doing today it's supposed to be a mask now you know that i have to remove it because i have to speak otherwise it will sound muffled on the mic otherwise uh, please do wear masks it's important uh, at least in other ncr cities it's made mandatory to wear masks so be careful i do not want anyone of you to get sick at this point of time when and some exams are just two weeks away presentation is just one week away no <laughs> so uh, how are things good okay so uh, who will remind me what were we doing in the last class testing testing methods okay so what kind of testing methods were we looking at yes. hmm standard test methods what are these standard test methods that are compared what are these standard test methods march test and galloping test okay and wo to patterns ho gaya okay so we started looking with looking at what kind of tests we need to do on in fact we start with why is test important in the first place why is it important because it is not just functionality that we need to guarantee to the customers we also need to guarantee some minimum level of performance to them hmm? so we need to test whatever ic we design whatever memory we design whatever we design we have to test it and that is not just about semiconductors it is about anything you you want to purchase a you know colgate toothpaste even that has to be tested before it is shipped to the customer so every lot has to be tested and it's important very important otherwise the customer experience will go bad that is why testing is important now coming to semiconductors or semiconductor memories pehle semiconductors we looked at different kinds of tests so one of the tests you remember was burn in test what is burn in test why is it important these are all interview questions <laughs> okay that is one aspect what else what is burn in test and why is it important So telling me the method of it, and you're also telling me what it does. Hmm? Why is it required? Why do you want to burn the device for the first two days of their life? So if it doesn't fail in the first two days, how are we sure it will not fail for for remaining part of life? yes we saw that bathtub curve bathtub curve meant or in the way the bathtub curve is it shows that there is a very high failure rate in early life many many parts that you manufacture will fail in early life then those parts which do not fail in early life will typically have a very long life the failure rate will plummet and then after aging after you know age related degradation then failure rate rises again now we do not want at least these first few failures early life failures to reach to the customer that is where we want to do burn in test okay and then burn in test is about as she mentioned applying a very high voltage for a very short duration of time so that if there is any sensitivity to aging to some aspects those parts would fail okay so bathtub curve is very important agar see we can on these are interview questions <laughs> these are keywords if you use the term bathtub curve they know you know you know the topic otherwise you are just beating around the bush hmm okay so one was burn in test another was iddq test what is iddq test thoda sa zor ke
okay so if there is some fault actually anywhere not just in the io region okay if there is a fault which leads to vdd to ground short then there will be large flow of current as soon as you turn the chip on so you want to before even putting the chip on the tester because if there is a large drain of current on the tester the tester can go bad and and you do not want to waste time tester time on all of this even before you do anything you simply put the die you connect all the pins to vdd to ground and see if there is any high drain of current that is happening if there is something like that happening which was not expected you simply throw the die away because that means there is some vdd ground short whether it is because of some metal short whether it is because of some device malformation whatever be the reason you can't do anything about it because to do anything you have to test it to put it on the tester the tester it the tester will not function because it will drain all the current from the tester so you will anyways not be able to test such a die so iddq tests are also done then we come to other testing and for memories or for many th things we said there would be something like built in self test humne scan test ki baat kari thi pichli baar scan test ki baat nahi kari thi so we'll just cover that aspect today so even before you know after this uh, iddq test we do a scan test what scan test does is it connects all the flip flops in your design so not just memories all the sequential elements flip flops in your design important flip flops at least it would connect them in a shift register format okay when it connects them in a shift register format it becomes very easy to control their contents and check their contents see imagine there are a million flip flops on a particular chip soc if you want to test all those millions of flip flops you only have access to 200 pins and these million flip flops are embedded deep into your logic how will you control what is stored and whether you are storing a zero or a one in your flip flop it is simply impossible you will have millions of patterns billions of patterns to run to test flip flops if they are functioning fine or not so what is done is uh, these flip flops are connected as a shift register so there is an additional input we give to a flip flop and an additional output we take from a flip flop and these inputs and outputs we connect as in the format of a shift register so whatever are the contents of the first flop will shift into the second flop then third flop then fourth flop and so on every clock cycle the contents would shift from one flop to another if there are 100 flops in one particular chain then 100 cycles may you will still be able to test the contents of all the 100 flops you will be able to uh, you know scan in that is right desired contents into all the 100 flops in 100 cycles itself otherwise you would have required as we said millions of cycles because these flops are spread all over your design so that is the beauty of scan scan chains they can help test sequential elements and other combinational circuits associated with sequential elements very quickly theek okay? hai so uh, scan test is done, boundary scan is done after that and after that you go to those other test mechanisms built in self test and so on now for memories we said we will have what is called as built in self test what is this built in self test naam se kya samajh mein aa raha hai so it is already built in it is already there on the chip and what does self test mean so it will automatically do this test when triggered kehne ka matlab last time we were discussing about uh, march tests galloping tests you know uh, and patterns like checkerboard solid and uh, and npss you know neighborhood pattern sensitive faults ko test karne ke liye we talked of different kinds of patterns now there are two ways to test a memory first is directly from the inputs and outputs of the memory of the chip you somehow access the memory ports and do all read write into the memory that is one way that will happen at the speed of the ios typically scan test would work not more than 50 megahertz other testing would also not be more than 100 megahertz so at 100 megahertz you will be testing me megabits of memories it will take a lot of time whereas your memory could actually operate at gigahertz 
वन नैनो सेकेंड साइकिल वन पॉइंट फाइव यू नो पॉइंट फाइव नैनो सेकेंड साइकिल भी होता है वेरी हाई स्पीड मेमरीज आर ऑल्सो देयर सो मेमरी कोड एक्चुअली ऑपरेट मच फास्टर बट यू आर टेस्टिंग इट ऑनली एट हंड्रेड मेगा हर्ट सो फर्स्ट यू नॉट एबल टू टेस्ट इट एट स्पीड सेकेंड इट टेक्स अ लॉट ऑफ टेस्ट टाइम टेस्टर टाइम दफर इंक्रीज इज कॉस्ट नॉट डिजायरेबल सो वट वी डू इज वी वी पुट दीज बेस्ट इंजन बिल्ट इन सेल्फ टेस्ट इंजन ऑन टू द चिप्स where when triggered they will access the memory both for read write whatever you want to do and uh, whatever pattern you want to write the engine would have it there would it would be a kind of a small microcontroller controlling your memory interface hmm? and aap best ko trigger karo jab tak aapki wahan pe 10 cycles chali hain and something else is being tested you know you are testing let us say some arm core logic or risk 5 logic you're testing some other logic elsewhere in the meantime your memory gets tested entire memory gets tested in parallel so built in self test is kind of a mandatory requirement for memories primarily because of the capacity constraint and also the fact that uh, they can actually operate fast you want to test them at speed you do not want to test them at at a slow speed so you want a best there now while the first constraint doesn't exist for logic in the sense that in logic you will not have as many transistors or as many fault nodes as possible as there are possible in memories but speed wala point to logic ke liye bhi valid hai so for logic testing again there is a best this is called as logic best and this is also synthesizable it is synthesized based on whatever combinational logic you put in your circuit okay so after your boundary scan test and everything you run this best test and you test the all the all the circuits which you can test through a best whether it is a logic combinational block whether it is a memory uh, there is also a lot of research happening on uh, analog best that is how to test analog circuits like uh, clock generators or stuff like that okay so uh, once best results come then you say okay now most of my components are working fine i have tested memories i have tested logic i have tested different blocks finally we do a functional test at the chip level also that are the interfacing interfaces between these ips that i am using also working fine or not that is the final stage of testing okay so now tell me one thing when you want to test any ic any design what tvts would you be testing it at what process voltage and temperature would you be testing it at fast process why fast process in the fast process vt will be lower and leakage will be higher okay so what so leakage errors will be highlighted but speed errors will not be highlighted on fast slots test kar rahe hain to jo bhi manufacturer hoga usko test kar rahe hain yes whatever is manufactured you have to test that then how does the question of process come process is whatever is also manufactured you have to test that now comes the question of voltage and temperature so what voltage and temperature would you test minus 40 and 125 why so i have a body implant chip a pacemaker that needs to be tested do i need to test it at minus 40 or even at 125 okay so for that one we will use typical value okay then how do we decide which voltage and which temperature to test yes it depends on the application we have to see where the product will be used if a product is to be used in an automotive setting for example you may want to test even at 150 degrees celsius 
But if it is a biomedical device, which is implantable device, you would say it is usually be operating at around 35 degrees. You know, that is the body temperature. Usually around that. So you would test it from 50 to lay, say 25 to 50 degrees Celsius. Good enough. Even if it is a hearing aid or a, you know uh, this microphone that I am putting on my ear as of now, uh, you would not test it beyond uh, minus or not not even below zero degrees. Why? Because this is very close to the body. Even if you know wherever I am, even if I am in freezing cold outside, there is freezing cold outside. The microphone is close to my body. There is some heat there. So we decide the temperature at which you need to test or the voltage at which you need to test based on user conditions. Remember in the first session of DVD, we decided what my functional specifications of a particular chip were. That is when we also decide what my test specifications are. Okay, and that is what then tells me where should I be testing. So even though I may sign off at minus 40, why do I sign off at minus 40 and not test at minus 40? I want to leave some design margins. Hmm? Because minus 40 will be slower, especially if, if I'm operating like it's an implantable device and I'm operating near threshold or sub-threshold region, then minus 40 will be slower. So I, I want to test that all my delays are passing, everything is fine, even at minus 40 degrees Celsius. I want to leave margins. So for margins in CAD, in CAD verification, you may go to further extremes of temperature and voltage. But during testing, there could be a different specification derived from the product requirement. Is that fine? Sorry? Minus 40 pe agar aap sub threshold region mein ho to slow hi rahega na? Near near threshold mein ho to slow hi rahega. Even in near threshold it will be slow. Basically if temperature inversion has happened, minus 40 will be slower than 125. Temperature inversion yaad hai? That is another interview question. <laughs> So temperature inversion is uh, that as we lower the voltage of operation, uh, minus 40 degrees Celsius starts to become a slower PVT. The current at minus 40 starts to be lower than the current at 125 because of different effects. Ah, high voltages pe aisa rehta hai. High voltages pe minus 40 is higher current than 125 because 125 pe there are these vibrations that happen which lead to reduction in mobility. But at low temperatures, uh, at low voltages, inversion happens because minus 40 pay, there are not sufficient minority carriers to become a part of your inversion, inversion layer or the like. Abhi hum degree Celsius ki baat kar. High voltage say minus 40 will be faster even for slow lots. Okay. So uh, this is about overall testing overview. Okay. How is the product tested? Yes. So as a designer, I may want to leave design margins because it's a life critical device, but going to be put in my heart sometime. Huh? I want to leave margins, I do not want it to fail. So I test it and ensure that it is verified, CAD verified at minus 40, there are margins, okay? But when I want to test, I do not want to, so devices are now already manufactured. I do not want to waste any manufactured device because every manufactured device sold is profit for me now. Every extra device is profit for me. I want to make maximum profits. So whatever other specifications, if the specifications say zero degrees Celsius, I will test at zero degrees Celsius. If they say 10 degrees Celsius, I will test at 10 degrees Celsius. And I know even for 10 degrees Celsius for a pacemaker, I'm leaving quite a bit of a margin. The pacemaker will typically operate between 35 to 39 degrees. I'm still testing it at 10 degrees. That is good enough. So none of the devices will still fail at the, at the customer end. 
But when I was designing, I wanted to be sure that my yield is hundred percent, no failures on silicon, because every extra die that is manufactured and is sellable is profit. Okay. So at times it may also happen that you signed off at minus forty and you also have to test at minus forty. This will also be there because that is the user requirement. But many times you will see that you are signing off in CAD at a more extreme value, but you do not even test at that extreme value because that is not required. Moreover, at CAD, uh, when you are designing something, uh, the, for example, if it's a memory, then the memory that you design will not only be used in a pacemaker; it will be used in other applications also. For example, a mobile phone. So for a memory, you will need to sign it off at a, at a very wide voltage and temperature range because the mobile phone would need. to be tested at minus 40 degrees also and probably 105 degrees also but not a pacemaker so ip design and ip testing will still be at very extreme voltages and temperatures product validation will not happen at those extreme temperatures it is also not possible to test everything at minus 40 on product because to create that minus 40 degree temperature you have to have a special chamber in which you will keep You have first put in liquid nitrogen, lower the temperature, then put the dye there, then test it, and then as soon as you remove the dye, the temperature also goes. So you have to do it all over again. So testing at minus forty degrees or even at one twenty-five is really not desirable. We do not want to do it. So there are a lot of there. There is in fact a lot of research, and even in my group that happens, where we look at how to test. Failures which would otherwise appear at minus forty or one twenty-five degrees Celsius at twenty-five degrees itself. For example, can I activate the memory in such a way that a SNM failure which was expected at one twenty-five degrees C can be tested at can be observed even at twenty-five degrees Celsius? So, what do you think you could do if you want to test such a thing? A uh, impending failure at one twenty-five, you want to test at twenty-five. What would you do? SNM failure. जो भी बोल रहा है जोर के बोले आपने मास्क भी पहना हो या मेरे को सुनाई नहीं देगा अदरवाइज वी कैन टेस्ट एट हायर वोल्टेज ओके उससे क्या होगा सो वट ही सेंग इज दैट इफ वी टेस्ट इन सच अ कंडीशन वे आर एस एन एम फेलियर इज एक्सेंटुएटेड सो ही सेंग हाई वोल्टेज आई एम सेंग only let me give boost on the world line if i can introduce a test mode in which when you access the memory world line goes to 1.12 volts instead of 1.1 volts just 20 milli volts higher i may be able to emulate a failure of 125 degrees celsius at 25 degrees also you see so electrically how can i emulate a failure at a different vt condition on to regular voltage and temperature this is a area of you know very high importance and research because testing at 125 and and minus 40 is extremely costly so if you really want to for example do your btech project or mtech project in this kind of a domain there could be projects like this that could be thought of and dual port memories for example how can you test whether there could be coupling faults without really going to the, those complex patterns like galloping patterns the galloping patterns why do we not want to go to galloping patterns because the order is n square and you know, we can't go but if i could do it through the march test can i identify a pattern or a test mode where for example i would say that uh, the i will define one word one uh, port as an aggressor and the other port as a victim okay and aggressor port i will tune it in a particular way i will raise it word line raise its word line to a different level and the victim node i will victim port i will reduce the bit line voltages to a different level and then i will activate the memory so i do not need a galloping pattern now the the complexity of testing a dual port memory reduces multifold you see so this is an area of active research lot of work is happening there 
but uh, if you if you do really want to do this kind of research you have to be working finally with a company like mentor graphics uh, or synopsis who generate those bests because whatever benefit you draw or get out of it you have to use it in the best additionally you also have to have a team which would design memories with such failure modes or which such test modes enabled so it's it's a close knit thing you have to have the design which helps or which supports such testing but you also have to have a bist which is able to make use of such features okay so in fact that is the agenda of our today's class the agenda of today's class is test features or test infrastructure that is embedded into memories so we already know that memory bist is coupled with all on chip rams all on chip rams will have a memory bist associated with them the reason we just discussed hmm? now let us say you designed the chip you designed you did complete sign off of your design and now you want to insert bist so test insertion is typically done after regular sign off why why would you insert test so vds how many of you have done you are doing test wala part abhi tak nahi aaya ha to why do you insert test after sign off i will ask sne to put this question in your end sem exam hmm? why is test insertion done after sign off regular sign off why is it not done in the beginning itself तो पहले क्यों नहीं करते था लास्ट में क्यों करते हैं आफ्टर साइन ऑफ क्यों करते हैं यू कॉन्ट हाँ तो यू एनी वे हैव टू टेस्ट वैट यू डू नॉट इंसर्ट टेस्ट इन द फर्स्ट आइट्रेशन इट सेल्फ दैट इज माय क्वेश्चन Okay, you're saying some input doesn't impact the overall output. So, see, you need to know what to test. Unless you know where the critical paths are, unless you know where the sequential elements are, where you need to build the scan chains, how can you insert test right away? So, initially, you you do a clean sign off of the chip. Where you say, okay, this is what I, this is what my design requires. This is what my functionality is required, and then you insert test. Now let us say you signed off your chip at 900 megahertz. Memory is in the critical path. Now you say I want to insert best. What does that mean? Now your memory input, let us say address, it was originally controlled by the ARM core or RISC V core. now it also needs to be controlled by the best controller because best in then also wants to change the address now that is what this means na it will change the address it will do read write into the memory so all inputs of the memory need to be controlled by best also what happens on every input you will have to insert a mux depending on whether it is a best test mode or not this mux will choose either the combinational logic from the chip which is risc five core or arm core or from the best aapne sign off kara tha 900 megahertz pe ab aapne uske andar ek mux insert kar diya kya hua 900 megahertz ka to danton gopal ho gaya that 900 megahertz goes to 800 megahertz i was so happy my customer wanted 850 i have signed off at 900 but finally as soon as i inserted test it is 800 no good so what do you do you have to again do an iteration of sign off now with bis inserted with those muxes in place now you say okay let me speed up the combinational path in some way let me do something to regain now 850 only hmm customer delight bhul jao customer satisfaction to mile kam se kam and realize that 
अगर आप पूरा साइन ऑफ कर चुके हो एक तरह से तो यू आर ऑलमोस्ट एट द एंड ऑफ योर डिजाइन साइकिल यू आर सपोज टू नाउ हैंड इट ऑफ हैंड ऑफ योर नेटलिस्ट टू द फिजिकल डिजाइन टीम सो दैट दे कैन डू द फिजिकल डिजाइन पार्ट नाउ एंड नाउ यू आर इन द क्रिटिकल पार्ट अर्लियर मेमोरी वॉज इन द क्रिटिकल पार्थ नाउ यू आर ऑल्सो इन द क्रिटिकल पार्थ मेमोरी तो है क्रिटिकल पार्थ में सो नॉट अ गुड सिचुएशन टू बी एन सो वट इज डन इज दैट वी इंसर्ट मक्स इन साइड द मेमरी ऑलरेडी सो दिस इज कॉल्ड एज अ बेस्ट मक्स एनी इनपुट ऑफ अ मेमरी विल हैव अ मक्स एसोसिएटेड विद एट सो हु इज डिजाइनिंग द आई यू एंड द कंट्रोल रीजन इन द प्रोजेक्ट okay so you are designing best marks this is the purpose because if address changes or address path changes now with the best marks you inserted the best best will connect so it's best input the regular path does not get impacted so the 900 megahertz se aapne sign off kara tha wo wahi ka wahi raha and you can insert best very easily there is no iteration again so this is done on all inputs of the memory okay so that is best marks uh you remember we talked about testing shadow logic of the memory did we talk about it or not what is shadow logic in fact we remember something i talked about it yet so uh, let us say let me go to the whiteboard just give me a second Are you able to see the whiteboard? No, not yet. Oh no, I am not able to see it. Doesn't work. <laughs> so what do we do? We'll have to change the display settings somehow. So we'll go in the PPT only. PPT is visible again. Great. so let us say there is this memory there is some combinational logic before it and there is some combinational logic that will come after the memory am i right now if you want to test so there are multiple outputs that are going there and multiple inputs that are coming from here if i want to test this combinational logic how do i test it मेमोरी को बायपास करके कैसे बायपास करोगे सो यू वुड देर इज अ मेमोरी इन बिटवीन सो हाउ वुड यू टेस्ट द शेडो सो दिस इज कॉल्ड एज शेडो लॉजिक इट इज फॉलोइंग बिहाइंड द मेमोरी टू टेस्ट दिस पर्टिकुलर लॉजिक यू हैव टू फर्स्ट राइट इन टू द मेमोरी व्हाट यू वांट टू यू नो ट्रिगर द आउटपुट विद एंड देन रीड वेन यू रीड द मेमरी इट विल trigger the combinational logic and you will be able to test the combinational logic but what if memory itself has an error 
how will you distinguish if there was a error in the combinational logic or the memory so it becomes complex the controllability and observability both degrade so what we do is we add a feature called as memory bypass what does memory bypass do ab saksham extend karega so what memory bypass does is the output of the sense amplifier has a mux in it so either the sense amplifier output will go to the q pin or the input data will go to the q pin so if i go to the memory bypass mode then input data goes to the q pin memory access is no longer required i bypassed merit bypass faridabad bypass so we bypass the city altogether we bypass the memory altogether no traffic jams now and you do not now you do not really bother about uh, whether the memory was working fine or not you can test your shadow logic independent of memory the total number of test patterns that you need also reduce very significantly because otherwise you will have to test the memory you will have to distinguish between memory faults and combinational logic faults through your test patterns now memory test patterns separate combinational logic test patterns separate no confusion okay so t bypass memory bypass software bypass bahut sare namon se alag alag companies usko bolti hain but this is a feature which allows testing of shadow logic testing hmm and it's a very important feature that every uh what do you say every every vendor today offers okay then scan chains we already talked about scan so what is scan who will repeat who will remind us abhi thodi der pehle hi baat kare thi what is scan testing ha huh? we design we design the components as shift resistors okay something better you convert existing flip flops on your design to shift resistors okay so memory mein to flip flop hote nahi memory to khud ek sequential element hai to fir yahan pe main scan ki baat kyon kar raha hu reduce the number of cycles that you want to test okay to test the logic at the see humne jab shadow logic ki baat kari to humne kaha memory ke baad ke combination logic ko i want to test separately so that i can reduce the total number of test patterns now for input side also see one thing is testing with this but then what was the last step that i told you after your all components have been independently tested you will test in the actual mode and see that everything is working fine now suppose this this gave a good green but now there is a failure somewhere the the local the logic base said the combination logic is fine memory base said memory logic is fine memory is working fine but there is a failure when everything starts to function together why could it happen at interface something went wrong what could go wrong at the interface it cannot be a short now because aapne sab kuch test kar liya baaki sab to functionally aapne green keh diya hai ab kya ho sakta hai jo gadbad ho sakta hai interface pe timing failures it could happen that the setup time or hold time was not met when you tested with this there was a different path that got activated in that everything was fine but when you now activated the actual path a new path is being tested and over here there could be a failure due to timings so how do you differentiate where is the failure is the memory timing wrong what you characterize for the memory is that wrong or is the combinational logic giving more delay how do you test for that what we say is we will insert a scan chain at the memory inputs so there is one bismux 
there is also a scan chain that you insert at the inputs so again control logic design team and io design team you have designed the scan inputs also and the scan flops also hmm? so what happens now is suppose there is a whole time failure you know that when the input transition in the combinational logic it was expected to transition at my memory input in this time before the next clock came however it did not so there is a failure delay failure in the combinational logic part now let us say the scan chain captured everything absolutely fine what that means is oh the combination logic gave everything in the right time that is how scan chain has captured it there is something wrong inside the memory so now this is not about a blame game ki kisne galti kari it is more about understanding of the design better so that the next iteration we could at least correct what went wrong if we do not know what went wrong how will we correct it in the next design iteration so do not look at it as a blame game ki hame batana hai ki kahan pe kisne galti kari kaun si team ki galti ki wajah se silicon fail kara that is not the intent galti hai to hai theek hai what is important is how to correct it now finally customer is waiting for a chip customer is waiting for his delivery so you have to quickly do a turn around correct the ip where the failure was and then resend uh, resend the silicon get the silicon now test it again and then send to the customer so it is very important to localize the faults so that we can improve the design for the subsequent iterations and that is where scan chains come in handy okay almost all memory vendors have all these features embedded in the memories today clear so this is about testing there is one more aspect that we will want to talk about which is like error correction codes what are error correction codes i'm sure all of you have heard about it some some course or another what are error correction codes so we add some extra information into our channel through which by deciphering this information and correlating it with actual information that was sent we can identify if there is an error or not the most simple error identification error detection code is a parity bit you have uh, a 24 bit data that you want to transmit uh, you say that my parity bit is set such that there will be even number of ones so if there are odd number of ones you will send a parity bit as one if there are even number of ones you will send the parity bit as zero now at the receiving end if i receive odd number of ones i know there is an error either the parity bit is wrong or one of the other bits is wrong i at least know there is an error and that i would request a retransmission that is the most basic error correction code parity bit similarly you have more complex correction codes so you have error detection hai khali you have error correction codes also where you say that i will encode all the data that i want to transmit hmm and i will encode it by using some extra bits so you have single error correction double error detection codes you have double error correction triple error detection codes what does this mean single sec dead means you can correct a one error and if there are two errors you can confidently say there is a there are there are two errors if it was only one error you would even correct it but if there are two errors you will tell there are two errors and you will ask for a retransmission if the channel is very noisy you also have triple error correction a uh, quad error detection like three errors can be corrected and four can be detected but as you go to this higher level of correction correctability the cost of extra transmission increases the cost of encoding your data increases and at the receiving end you also have to decode so all that is additional cost not just in terms of hardware 
but also in terms of power, in terms of latency, because now there is time that is required to encode, time that is required to decipher. Hmm? So all deciphering, decode, ciphering is a different thing. We will talk about it in the next slide. So now extra time will be required for all these aspects. So error correction codes ensure reliability, um, even in noisy environments, but they also come with some cost. That cost may be acceptable, may not be acceptable, you decide. The designer decides, the architect decides. Okay? But error correction codes result in recovery of failing bits. For memories, what does this mean? This means that if one uh, sense amplifier fails, I will still be able to read. Do you see this? If one read up, if, if one bit fails, see, abhi tak kya tha? Abhi tak paradigm ye tha, not a single bit should fail inside the memory. Only then you say memory is passed. Then we said, okay, we will add repairability. On a total die, there could be 10 failures that you could accept. Total die, 64 megabit, you can accept 10 failures because they have put in 10 extra fuse locations, whatever. Huh? So you all allowed some level of repairability. But at the design end, you still cannot benefit from it because you said that this is only for process level defectivity. We process me, it never a chip banario, kahina kain defect saying it, Kali usko cover karnekle, yes, failures, ye apne repair dala hai. Remember when we were discussing about repair and redundancy, I was very clear that you cannot take benefit of it in terms of design. For design, you still want every bit to pass. This is added only for process level defectivity. Huh? Now we are adding something which designers can benefit from. Because uh, now every word, there can be one error and you can still correct it. Amazing. So, where you have 64 megabits, you have 64 bits. You have 64 bits. Do you realize the big difference? Instead of qualifying six sigma, you can qualify three sigma and get away with it. You can significantly bolster your performance, reduce the power consumption because to qualify six sigma, you needed to discharge the bit line to 100 millivolts. All the bit lines discharging to 100 millivolts, some kind of power consumption happens. Now, when you need only three sigma, you can as well discharge the bit line to 60 millivolts. Not only will you be faster, you are also lesser power consuming, less power gets wasted. Where do you lose? Area. Extra bits need to be stored. Where else do you lose? Latency. Because now when you're writing, you have to first encode. And then you write. And when you're reading, again you have to decode. And then you read. So if you are in a pipeline architecture, where encoding can happen in one cycle, then you write. And when you're reading, reading can happen in one cycle, then you decode and then you send to the lower level. If you're in a pipeline mechanism, this can still happen easily without any obvious latency observed or any loss of frequency at the uh, chip level. But if that is not the case, you cannot use it. So in which, which all kind of memories can you use error correction codes? Huh? Caches. Flash. Okay. Flash me. Yes. And DRAMs, main memories. Yes. And L2 caches. L3 caches. See, L1 cache has to definitely operate at the processor frequency. When you want to access L2 cache or L3 cache, you already know that there is a latency that is setting in. And L2 caches being much larger, they anyway take more than one cycle to access. So they are anyway taking more than one cycle to access. Let them take one more. You decode in that cycle. So now, if you do it for the L2 cache, what happens? You can use a much denser chip 
मच डेंसर मेमोरी सेल सी अभी तक जो आप मेमोरी सेल अपने प्रोजेक्ट्स में बना रहे हो उसके अंदर यू आर क्वालिफाइंग एस एन एम फॉर सिक्स सिग्मा दैट इज लीडिंग टू इंक्रीज इन एरिया ऑफ द मेमोरी सेल हाउ मेनी ऑफ अस आर वर्किंग ऑन मेमोरी सेल प्रोजेक्ट सो टू क्वालिफाई सिक्स सिग्मा इन एस एन एम मीन्स यू हैव टू टेक सम केयर ऑफ द एरिया यू लूजिंग सम एरिया बिकॉज ऑफ दैट नाउ आई सी दैट ओके एवरी वर्ड यू कैन करेक्ट वन बेट आई एम गिविंग यू ई सी सो यू कैन यूज अ डेंसर मेमरी सेल Used a denser memory cell. You added some extra area because of extra bits that you need to store. But you saved on uh, how do we put it? Power also and speed of operation also. So again, this is no panacea. You have to check in in your use case when you're finally designing in your use case if it makes sense to use ECC in L2 cache or not. You have to decide. L3 cache, you have to decide. based on what trade off you are finally arriving at but yes for dram for flash ecc is a kind of necessary thing kalyan was so clear in his uh, you know that in those multi level cells unless you use ecc you cannot do anything hai na so that is what you need to do so he said okay instead of 128 bits i i store 176 bits kitni sari extra bits i will store but i will ensure there are multi level so overall density has increased so much and in this case all that they needed to do was increase the 3d height not area per se so over there ecc did not even come at the cost of area manufacturing time yes but not area hmm ecc will be off chip means okay because uh, when you read when you manufacturing that particular flash it is so many pillars going up the area beneath the flash is already for the memory other logic row decoders and everything else so they said okay ab jab ecc dalna hai isko isi flash ke around dalunga to is flash ka area bad jayega ईल्ड का नुकसान होगा लेट मी पुट इट ऑफ चिप एंड स्मॉल चिप आई विल पुट विच विल एट द इंटरफेस जस्ट एट दूस आई विल पुट दैट किसी भी लेयर से आ रहा है आप उसको ईसीसी के थ्रू पास करो एंड देन यू डू इट ओके सो दिस इज अनदर एस्पेक्ट ऑफ मेमरीज जहां पे आप ओवरऑल मेमरी ईल्ड को इंप्रूव कर सकते हो पीपीए को इंप्रूव कर सकते हो बाय using this extra logic around it hmm? now this is another aspect see when we are talking about applications like automotive which are life critical in nature hmm? you want zero failures hmm? and somehow even if now you want zero failures at 0 kilometers that is one thing what does zero failure at 0 kilometer mean anyone obvious hai english hai but who will explain zero failure at 0 kilometer what does it mean this is a keyword for automotive applications absolutely no failure when on the first start of the car the car should simply start imagine see aapne ek car ko so there is this uh, kya kehte hain usko belts kya kehte hain usko ha huh? conveyor belt chhota sa us conveyor belt ki term nahi samajh lo abhi ha huh? but there is this pipeline conveyor belt whichever way you look at it a, a manufacturing floor jahan pe aapne ek ek karke pehle एक्सेल के अंदर व्हील्स लगाए आपने पूरा चेसेस बनाया चेसेस के ऊपर फिर आपने कार की बॉडी बनाई आपने इंजन डाला सब कुछ करा महीना डेढ़ महीने का प्रोसेस था डेढ़ महीने बाद कार खड़ी होकर तैयार हुई है आप उसको अब स्टार्ट करके गैराज में मूव करना चाहते हो और पता लगा वो स्टार्ट ही नहीं हुई वट हैपन्स एंटायर शार्फ फ्लोर हैज टू बी शट डाउन डू रियलाइज दिस Because this car is blocking, 
If it doesn't move out, how will the next car come to this place? How will the robot? How will the robot solder the tips on the next car? How will the next welding happen? Nothing can move. In automotive applications, zero failure at zero kilometer means as soon as the car is ready, it should be out of the shaft flow. Take it to the garage. Then it fails. We don't bother. Okay, we bother, but it should not fail at zero kilometers. This is one of the very very important. See, think of a cell phone or anything. How does it matter? नहीं on हुआ तो नहीं हुआ. Bin में डाल देंगे. कार के साथ आप ऐसा नहीं कर सकते वो पूरा शार्प उसका पूरा चेन ब्लॉक हो गया पूरा मैन्युफैक्चरिंग लाइन ब्लॉक हो गया सो ऑटोमोटिव के लिए जीरो फेलर एट जीरो किलोमीटर इज अ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट स्पेसिफिकेशन दैट इज वन एस्पेक्ट उसको हमने कहा से कवर करा टेस्टिंग से हमने कहा कि हम वन फिफ्टी पे भी टेस्ट करेंगे हम एक्स्ट्रा टेस्ट चला देंगे ठीक है हम बहुत कुछ करेंगे ताकि जीरो किलोमीटर पे जीरो फेलियर हो बट डज दैट मीन उसके बाद फेल हो जाए आप गाड़ी ड्राइव कर रहे हो सेवेंटी किलोमीटर पर आर इंडिया के हिसाब से बात करते हैं हाईवे पे हो सेवेंटी हंड्रेड किलोमीटर पर आर पे आप जा रहे हो ताज एक्सप्रेस वे पे जा रहे हो एंड सिर्फ फेल कर गया हा इंजन के अंदर अब फ्यूल इंजेक्शन बंद क्या होगा समन एल्स कम फ्रॉम द बैक एंड हिट यू You're gone. That person is also gone. It's a life critical situation. You cannot expect a microcontroller that is going in automotive to even fail when it is in life in action. You can't afford that, huh? So what do we do? Wear and tear to hona hi hai na. Some every chip will fail at some point of time. So what do we do? How can you avoid a failure? Failure will happen. Huh? भाई अब इंडिया की जैसी मार्केट में मैंने कह दिया कि पंद्रह साल से पुरानी कार्स को स्क्रैप कर दो. How many of you know people who still have more than fifteen year old cars on the roads? I know. And Delhi में है. Huh? So. गलत है तो क्या हुआ डज दैट मीन लॉस ऑफ लाइफ इज एक्सेप्टेबल नाउ कैनरी सर्किट इफ इट इज फेलिंग देन यू शुड शट डाउन हम्म सो सक्षम ने एक बात कही दैट वेन एवर यू पावर अप वेन एवर यू स्टार्ट द कार यू टेस्ट एवरीथिंग यू रन द डायग्नोस्टिक्स एवरी टाइम That is one thing that one can do, and in fact, that is done. ठीक है? But that doesn't solve the problem, Saksham. जब मैंने start करा तो सब कुछ ठीक था. जब मैं expressway पे उस temperature पे चला रहा हूँ, 45 degree Celsius पे 100 km per hour चला रहा हूँ, सारा heated है engine, सब कुछ खराब है. तब aging हो रही है, बहुत high pace पे aging हो रही है, और तब वो फिर भी खराब हो सकता है. What to do now? Some sort of warning system. that is called as safety features so all automotive chips have built in safety features there are different levels of safety features which are defined by adas levels uh asl levels asl standards a b c and d asl level asl level a says that okay your you know uh, automotive ke andar jo aapka navigation system hai that is asl level a नेविगेशन सिस्टम खराब हो भी गया तो क्या होगा अब आपको बार बार रुक के रास्ता पूछना पड़ेगा दैट्स इट आप गलत रास्ते पे चले जाओगे दैट्स इट यही होगा नो लॉस इन लाइफ हाउ एवर वेन यू टॉक ऑफ दिस एम पी एफ आई मल्टी पॉइंट फ्यूल इंजेक्शन वाला जो कंट्रोलर चेक है अगर उसमें कुछ गड़बड़ हुई या आपके ब्रेकिंग सिस्टम में गड़बड़ हुई इट इज लाइफ क्रिटिकल एयर बैग रैंडमली इंफ्लेट कर गया इट इज लाइफ क्रिटिकल मतलब सब कुछ ठीक चल रहा है एयर बैग भाग What to do? Can't accept that, nay. So, in such a situation, what we need is a warning system. Before the failure actually happens, you need a warning to come. And such applications, which can lead to loss of life, they so, such applications means such places where the chip 
failure can lead to loss of life you need to follow acld and acld is a very very complex standard the way these standards are defined in iso 26262 what is iso what is iso huh international standards organization it is something like isi india mein isi hai aap isi mark dekhte ho koi cheez khareedte ho to iso is international standards organization okay where it says that uh, every product that comes out of the factory is iso 26262 com com compliant what that means is iso 26262 ts is a standard for transport systems ka you know automotive systems in a way तो उसका चाहे सॉफ्टवेयर है चाहे हार्डवेयर है दैट इज कंप्लायंट टू द स्टैंडर्ड्स दैट आर सेट दे पास द क्वालिटी स्टैंडर्ड सेट आउट इन दिस द क्वालिटी स्टैंडर्ड्स इन देमसेल्व्स अब कहने को स्टैंडर्ड है बट दे आर वेरी वेग दे से मोर देन 90% ऑफ फेलियर्स शुड बी डिटेक्टेबल बिफोर दे हैपन नाउ व्हिच 90% एनी 90% now one company works on one set of 90% another company works on another set of 90% they pay extra cost or less cost and they are still compliant to iso 26262 so it's not a simple thing to handle it's a beast actually uh in in automotive in companies like st microelectronics or infineon which have strong sales for automotive ics you will see there are full teams working on iso 262 standards इन फैक्ट आपके जो सीनियर्स वगैरह हैं जिन्होंने एनएक्सपी ज्वाइन करा है या इंफिनियन ज्वाइन करा है या एस टी में भी ऑटोमोटिव ग्रुप ज्वाइन करा है ईच एम्प्लॉय हैज टू अंडर गो अ ट्रेनिंग टू अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट इज आईएसओ 26262 इट इज मैंडेटरी रिक्वायरमेंट कि आपका पूरा का पूरा स्टाफ स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम अ फ्रेश इंजीनियर इज ट्रेंड ऑन आईएसओ 262 स्टैंडर्ड्स बिफोर दे स्टार्ट टू वर्क ऑन अवर चैप्टर इट इज अ रिक्वायरमेंट ठीक है सो बहुत अलग अलग तरह की इसमें रिक्वायरमेंट्स है फ्रॉम स्टाफ हु विल वर्क ऑन इट फ्रॉम द काइंड ऑफ कमेंट्स यू विल नीड टू पुट इन द सॉफ्टवेयर कोड दैट यू राइट फॉर इट फ्रॉम द काइंड ऑफ डिटेक्शन सर्किटरी दैट यू हैव टू हैव इन योर आई नॉट जस्ट रेगुलर आई पीज इन मेमरीज एंड एवरी अदर आई पी देर हैज टू बी डिटेक्शन सर्किटरी सो इन मेमरीज फॉर एग्जाम्पल वी वुड पुट एडिशनल सर्किट्स लाइक एनकोडर्स ऑन word lines so that if by chance two word lines get selected i would raise an alarm two word lines were selected the output is not correct if by chance there is a glitch somewhere i would raise an alarm oh there was a glitch output could output may have been corrupted we do not know if it is corrupted or not it could have been corrupted so you have to have circuits which would identify there is a failure or not so a lot of research is happening in this domain also for automotive applications in fact uh, swapnil aap log jante hain so swapnil was working on one such circuit and he got published a paper in apc gas so uh, again this is one area of research jahan pe if you are interested you could actually do a lot because uh, memory road decoder kis kis tarah se fail kar sakta hai How to identify that? Right driver, how to how to fail? Can it? Sense amplifier, how to how to fail? Can it? How to trigger it? Trigger it? No. If it happened as failure, then how to identify it has happened? So canary is one part of it, but that's a very small part of it. Canary is about causing a failure before the actual failure happens. More important thing for memories would be razor. If a failure happens, I should be able to tell a failure has happened, even if after a few picoseconds. but i know that the failure has happened this data has to be discarded typically automotive chips would go with very high cost to ensure safety for example they will use tmr tmr stands for triple modular redundancy triple modular redundancy means every processor is replicated three times aapne break dabai ab fuel injection kam karna hai ya jo bhi karna hai तीन प्रोसेसर्स अलग अलग कैलकुलेट करेंगे और बताएंगे नया फ्यूल इंजेक्शन पॉइंट क्या होना चाहिए आइडियली तीनों का आउटपुट सेम होना चाहिए एक इनपुट तीनों को दिया गया था तीनों प्रोसेसर आर्किटेक्चर इज सेम एवरीथिंग इज सेम आइडियली तीनों का आउटपुट सेम होना चाहिए इफ ड्यू टू सम एरर सम एजिंग और वट वन फेल्स द अदर टू विल स्टिल बी इन द मेजोरिटी 
you use the majority logic and give the correct instruction to the machine and you record okay this one failed now if the failures are random you ignore them but if you notice that one particular core is failing more often when the next time your car goes for servicing the car is connect aapko pata nahi yaar pata hai ki nahi pata hai car is actually connected the panel is connected to the system of the servicing agency so it is best to get your servicing done with honda or toyota or whatever dealers bhai don't go to regular roadside one because they will not be able to test this with electronic cars with electronic components in your cars you want such information to be recorded with the company and so that if something needs to be changed okay you pay for it but you change you save your life okay so uh, <laughs> again indian markets ne aap kaho ki toyota ke service center pe jaake service karao it is much costlier than a regular uh, roadside service wala but and it used to work fine you know roadside service wala service center was fine until the point of time today when you have so much electronics in your in your cars the entire brain of the car is electronics basically is it not so it is important that you get this thing reviewed and done properly serviced and recorded at the service center okay so that if something needs to be changed if there is some error some fault that is arriving in your motherboard they can change that they can change the panel and you can still have a good safe car otherwise you will not even know gaadi to saaf ho jayegi gaadi ka engine oil bhi change ho jayega but it's no longer a mechanical car it's an electronic car today do not fully electrical yet but still lots of electronics is in there so it's important that we get the cars service from the right agency so that is safety features so that we know in advance that okay something is failing and i take the corrective action and if there is no no systematic failure happening even then i have stuff like triple modular redundancy or features and memories which tell that okay this this reading was erroneous use the reading of the other memory or read again ha huh? write again whatever do it again at least that information needs to be given to the customer to the chip okay that is safety features what would you understand by security features now hmm no one should be able to tamper with your chips why is security important कंट्रोल अभी ऑटोमोटिव में फंस गया इसको ये भूल गया कि हमारे चिप्स बैंकिंग में भी यूज होते हैं ना पासवर्ड में भी तो यूज होते हैं कार में भी यूज होते हैं कार में भी सेफ्टी सिक्योरिटी चाहिए बट हमारे चिप्स तो हर तरफ यूज होंगे ना यू हैव अ बैंकिंग चिप्स आपका एटीएम कार्ड है हाँ एटीएम छोड़ दो आपका सिम कार्ड ही है रेगुलर सिम कार्ड हाउ मेनी थिंग्स यू डू यूज विद योर सिम कार्ड यूपीआई पेमेंट से लेके कितनी सारी पेमेंट आप अपने सिम कार्ड के थ्रू एनेबल कर देते हो सपोज आपका सिम कार्ड किसी ने रेप्लीकेट कर लिया वॉट हैपन्स ऑल एस एम एस एस दैट कम टू यू ऑल्सो गो टू देट हैपन्स यू दे ट्रैक योर कोड एंटर यू टू योर बैंक अकाउंट विदड्रॉ ऑल द मनी एक्सेप्ट वन रूपी ऑल द मनी दे वॉन्ट टू विदड्रॉ they will get an otp code they also get a notification by the time you check your if tum to class mein baithe ho tum to nahi check kar rahe tumhara sms aaya ki nahi aaya wahan pe wo baitha hai taak mein tum kab class mein gaye aur tab wo sms otp bhijwayega ha chhod do class mein fir bhi check kar lete ho exam mein baithe to to nahi kar sakte hai na usi exam ke duran duran wahan to aap kangle hue yahan bhi kangle ho gaye एग्जाम में तो जो हुआ हुआ बट दूसरा भी कंगले हो गए तो क्या करोगे नॉट एक्सेप्टेबल है ना सो वी नीड सिक्योरिटी फीचर्स टू बी पुट इन साइड ऑल आई सीज दैट आर गोइंग टू इंपॉर्टेंट एप्लीकेशन लाइक बैंकिंग पासपोर्ट्स आइडेंटिफिकेशन एप्लीकेशन ओके इट इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इनफैक्ट एनी यू नो प्रोजेक्ट गोइंग फॉरवर्ड एनी प्रोडक्ट गोइंग फॉरवर्ड यू विल रियलाइज दैट security becomes a very important feature 
सी आज आप देखो आपके घर में हाउ मेनी ऑफ अस हैव एलेक्सा और सम सच डिवाइस एट होम गूगल होम एलेक्सा समथिंग लाइक दैट सो फ्यू ऑफ अस हैव इट ऑल द कन्वर्सेशन दैट यू आर हैविंग इन योर होम इफ द एलेक्सा इज ऑन और इफ द गूगल होम इज ऑन ऑल द कन्वर्सेशन आर एक्चुअली बींग रिलेट टू द क्लाउड यू नो दैट ऑल द कन्वर्सेशन एवरीथिंग बिकॉज इट डजेंट नो आपने हेलो एलेक्सा बोला तब उसको करना चाहिए लेकिन हेलो एलेक्सा को भी तो उसको रिकग्नाइज करना है ना तो एवरीथिंग इज बीइंग रिलेट जब हेलो एलेक्सा आएगा तब वाईफाई से उसके पास सिग्नल आएगा नाउ रिस्पॉन्ड दिस ठीक है सो यू डो नॉट वॉन्ट योर हाउस होल्ड कन्वर्सेशन टू बी ट्रांस टू बी वोट यू से इंटरसेप्टेड एंड यूज एज वेयर इज इट नॉट so while one level of research is happening on edge computing a lot of work is happening on edge computing there is a lot of work that is happening around uh, in memory compute to enable uh, very low power high throughput uh, ai algorithm development uh, again meri team mein bhi bahut sara kaam ho raha hai us pe but uh, uh, security features are also kind of a mandatory requirement so that whatever data is being transmitted is encoded is ciphered so that uh even if someone does transgress into your system they do not have access to it hmm? uh, you are you are expected to make some payments with your credit card from your set top box also you know airtel airtel pay for example uh, tata tata sky pay all those things you are in, expected to do those chips set top box chips also need to have security hana you want to control your light also with the set top box the set top box is the hub the light is to be controlled and payments also need to be made now light is being controlled by a wipro thing that may not need as much security okay that also need security by the way but that may not need as much security as as the google pay application installed on your uh, set top box does so different areas need to be defined with different levels of security in memory is again you have to therefore take care of security in a very important way memories that are used in uh, banking applications or passport applications for example they have special features like uh, uh, which would detect that there is a laser attack so devjit nahi abhi yahan pe but devjit for example is working on laser attacks if there is a laser attack happening how would you simply shut down not give any information to the user so you have to detect there's a laser attack and then you say no nothing doing i'm not even reading forget it you place a read request but you know you no longer read now because i suspect malicious intent hmm? similarly there could be other kind of attack five channel attacks and stuff like that which could happen uh amir and somya they worked on a on an algorithm to Im- implement chacha which is a streaming cipher algorithm inside the memory so that whatever keys public keys private keys you have also do not trans- get transmitted from uh, the memory to outside the memory so to say memory ke andar see if you have a 60 memory cell whether you are reading a zero or reading a one power consumption is the same either bit line will discharge or bit line bar will discharge Sense amplifier ka true node will discharge or false node will discharge. Power consumption is going to be the same, is it not? So, if you implement keys, cipher keys inside the memory and do operations and calculations inside the memory, taking care of neutrality of uh, power consumption. See, for example, when we are choosing the adder, we chose an adder where power consumption in zero output and one output was exactly the same. we could have chosen a much faster or a much denser adder also but we said no the entire purpose is i should not be enabling any side channel attack so i had to choose an architecture of an adder inside my memory which would be insensitive to incoming data so such design choices have to be made such that side channel attacks can be avoided such that we would be able to avoid any uh, what do you say attack whether it is a laser attack or any hijacking of the system has to be prevented okay so thursday session is actually a guest lecture dr ashish from st microelectronics will actually come uh, and talk about security features and 
a little bit about safety features. So, I have not shown you the circuits of safety. I have only given you a glimpse of what the functionality is. He will talk about circuits which are used in memories to detect there is an attack. To detect that, okay, there could be an erroneous read happening because two word lines were selected, or because uh, there was a glitch somewhere, or because the delays were a little more than what we had designed them to be. Okay, so there are circuits to handle all these things, and he will be talking about that. Uh, he is not supposed to be sharing any company confidential information, so we will largely be talking about the patents and other stuff that he has himself filed or that ST has filed. And he will, so they have the public domain knowledge. So he will be talking about that. But it is going to be a very interesting lecture. Uh, all those who are not in the class even today, please ask them to come. The lecture is being recorded, but I don't know if they will listen to the entire recording before next session or not. So please do ask them to come and benefit from this session. Okay. So we will close the session here. Next class is the guest session by Ashish. Uske baad ki do classes are project presentations. Next Tuesday and Thursday are project presentations. Then we have the last class on, 20, on 2nd of May, which is a Monday, but working as a Tuesday timetable. That class will cover, we will, I will give you a quick glimpse about uh, other kinds of memories like uh, PC, uh, phase change memories, uh, M magnetic RAMs, uh, ferroelectric RAMs, F RAMs. In ke baare mein hum thoda sa discussion karenge because I know there is an interest, curiosity, ki what is RAM, what is MRAM, what is all this. So we'll talk about that also. You're doing a memory design course, so you should know ki what is the next thing that may come. What should, be, what should you be prepared about? Okay. So we'll discuss that and we'll also discuss, let's say DVD may be talked about failure modes. We'll possibly talk about failure modes of memories also and how to debug a memory failure on silicon. So that will be the last lecture on 2nd of May. Okay. All physical. So, <laughs> okay. so we will close here and uh, I will upload the lecture uh, that recording has been done. This is the recording that has not been done. उसमें कुछ गड़बड़ थी। Hopefully इस वाली में ऐसा इशू नहीं आना चाहिए।